Let's go ahead and move on to the, the last one, which is going to be towers. And we can go back to Fantasy World and type in tower. As always, you can factor in where to put towers depending on where the plot is or what's going on. Um, if you just got back from some major combat, maybe somewhere in the plains, maybe a big battle took place and you just want your players to explore this old tower that's been abandoned, that's great. Um, you can Towers can go anywhere, but just like ruins and other buildings, they do really well on top of hills and mountains. And again, historically, these have been strategically, um, strategically the best defensible position. So on top of a mountain, on top of a hill, Another good place is to put them are along a tower. Let's say that you have maybe a bridge that's um, come, going across this river right here. Then a tower is a great thing to use to guard that bridge, to overlook the river, to see when people are coming. Towers are good to put next to cities or villages. Think of them as a defense tower or a warning tower to let people know that people are coming to attack a village or a city or a capital, what might be. So towers can be anywhere and they can have any function. But you can put them even in uh, the desert, maybe one next to an oasis, one that a, a tower that overlooks this oasis, guards and protects. Um, it has maybe it acts as a caravansary where people who are, have just been on a caravan can stop in the middle of the desert, rest at the tower, get water, eat, stuff like that. So think about that. So lots of cool things that you can do um, with towers. But I'm gonna put one here and I'm not going to worry about any paths leading to it because I feel like it's a desert and in a desert there's not like an official kind of road because there's a lot of sand and so the road is just going to get covered up with the winds blowing the sand around so I won't worry about a road there. Let's add a whole bunch of other towers. Let's keep going. There's so many different ones. There's a elven uh, tower. And remember we were talking about mountains so it might be a good idea to put like maybe an elven tower overlooking the lake overlooking the tower and this whole elven area maybe i want it to be a floating tower you could do that too if it's a floating tower then i would suggest that maybe you take a karst like this and then you can put the karst underneath the tower let's put it beneath the tower and that way it looks like you have it's floating on top you create group there we go and then we can just put it maybe it's over the water like this, or maybe it's up here. So a great way to do floating anything, floating towers, floating cities, is just take a karst or a mountain and put it underneath it. So it looks like it's an island underneath, right? So you, let's put it over here. I wasn't put on the mountains, but I don't have any floating towers. And in fact, I could probably put a couple floating towers along this edge here, and maybe these can be the coastal defense. And I'm, what I wanna do is I don't want them all to be the exact same. So what I'll end up doing is just changing them up like this. Let's put a couple more on there. Okay, let's go put another one in here. And one thing you also can do um, is you could put a shadow there if you wanted to. You could use the top layer. You could use a stamp at a blur. There's so many different options. Let's just go with top layer. And just so that you show that it's floating, you might, if it's not enough, doesn't seem obvious to you that, that it's floating, that's okay. You can use that top layer, a small brush. I use, whenever it comes to, sh to uh, shadowing, I generally use around 30% brush. And then I, what, if you really want the tower to seem like it's high up in the air, you would put the shadow further away from it. If you wanted to show that the tower was floating closer to the land, bring the, the shadow higher up or closer to it. So I wanna sew this one's fairly higher up, so I'll put it right there. I'll put it, this one maybe is a little bit closer to the ground, so I'll put it right there. And this one right here is fairly high up, so I'll put the shadow there. So if you wanna show that there's some shadows, that way it kind of really shows that it's popped up. But there's a lot of different ways that you could go about doing that, okay? Also fun things that you can do is you can have the series of towers maybe act as um, a barrier that protects a barrier, right? You could take uh, a path and make it blue, make the shadow blue, uh, blur it, and let's change the width and let's make it this way. And then we'll go segments and maybe you want um, 
showing that there's there's like maybe some crystals on top. Let's go ahead and change the shadow to blue as well. There we go. And let's change the width. There we go. And then of course I could take a crystal and just put it on top of here. And then it will kind of look like maybe, just maybe, uh, the crystals are shooting at each other and then kind of creating this kind of magical barrier effect. If you want, you could have them going around the whole area, creating this um, barrier that goes around it. It's up to you, right? So when it comes to towers, they can serve as any kind of function. You could even have a tower that fell over if you wanted to. So we could open up another one, type in tower. Let's say that I want to have a tower that fell over. For instance, I could have maybe, um, let's not use that one, use a different one. Let's see our options here. Maybe, oh, oh, let's also put some orc towers in too. I think that's kind of nice. Great places to put orc towers, by the way, are inside of pits. Great place to put them, right? Or you can put them on top of a mountain, of course, or a hill. Maybe you want to put a couple of them right here along the way, just along this road so it's defending the road. Put one here. Great places to put them. If you want a series of defensible positions along a road, towers work great for that. So you put them along that road. Let's do one that's kind of fallen over and broken. So I'll end up using maybe this tower right here. And let's go find a good location. Maybe I want to show that a tower has like fallen over and has broken a little bit. Then I can go ahead and just place it right there. And then I want to show that maybe it fell or it broke. So what I can do is just type in rock. Now there won't be any rocks in Fantasy World, but you can switch over to Fantasy Battle Maps. And let's just type in rubble. And there's some rubble right here. And I'm going to desaturate it. And what I'm going to do is go down a layer. I want it to be underneath. And then I can what I can do is just put some stones down like this. And let's also desaturate this one so that it's all the same color. There we go. And then I also want to make sure that uh, there's some stones in overlapping. Remember I talked about this overlapping is super important. So let's put one there. Let's make them a little bit smaller and put some on top of the tower. So now you have this nice ruined tower area. And we can also um, apply some textures to make that look good. So there's, And there's all kinds of textures we can use. Uh, cracked ground from the dungeons and fantasy battle map works great. I can go to advanced settings. I want to change the size because you can see the cracks are huge. Remember, it's a battle map texture, so you're going to have to scale it down. And then we'll go ahead and just apply a little bit of this cracked ground so that that way it kind of looks like it's been ruined and it blends in the final stamps with it. So now you have this ruined tower right there. So that works out well. So a lot of things that you can can do. We can throw in some more um, towers as well. Like maybe we want to have one in the, that's in the water. I'll show you a fun way to where you can make a tower look like it's half in the water and half above the water. So we'll type in tower again. And remember when I said this, you should scale up a stamp when editing it so that that way it's more easier uh, to edit. So first one is to take one tower, change the blend mode to luminosity. I'm going to change the contrast and the brightness so it kind of looks like it's underwater. And I'll maybe I'll even blur it a little bit so it looks like it's under the water. And then I'll set another one. Let's turn that blur off, turn the contrast back on, put it up a layer. Let's push this one down. There we go. I'm going to put it on top of it like that, right? Okay, so that one's on top of that one. Let's even push it up so it doesn't show like it's too much under the water. And then we'll go ahead and take a white path. Just put it down real quick and just see what it looks like. And then I can edit it as I see fit. Let's blur it. Let's blur it even more. And I'm going to create some waves that are going around it. In fact, what might work better is taking a whirlpool. Let's take this whirlpool right here and let's put that up one. Let's change uh, the blend mode to luminosity, maybe. Oopsie, luminosity, there we go. We'll put that right on top of it. And then let's change the brightness, there we go. And now you have like a whirlpool going around the tower. You can create the group, 
and then you can move it to where you, you feel you want to have it. And you can put it anywhere you want, over here somewhere, move it over to here, wherever you feel uh, the tower might look good, maybe along the coastline here. And you notice that the water is quite a bit brighter there, so that tower sticks out a lot underneath. So just change the brightness a little bit. There we go. So now it's not so ridiculously bright. Okay, and I'm going to turn the blur off for that as well. I had the blur on this one. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. I can kind of see the whirlpool a little bit better. Let's scale it down just a little bit more. There we go. So you have this nice underwater kind of uh, tower.